Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Welcome to the answer key for Unit 1, Lesson 2 on writing numeric expressions. This one here is really challenging, so I hope this video is helpful for you if you were looking for answers from the worksheet. Let's get into it. The worksheet had a couple questions. Here's number one. Write an expression for seven times the difference between nine and six. We've got a couple of words here that help us out. Times is going to mean multiplication. Difference is going to mean subtraction. And we've got these two here. So that tells us it's the difference between those two numbers. So I am going to have nine minus six and I am going to have seven times something. So let's go ahead and just write that out, seven times nine minus six, and that will be my answer to this question. That's seven times the difference between nine and six. There it is over there. You can also put parentheses, as you see in this example over there on the right. It's fine to have the parentheses. And in fact, with this question, it's probably more accurate to do that because we are multiplying times the difference. And if you just write it out like that, as far as order of operations goes, you would actually solve this first seven times nine before you do nine times six. So there we go. That is the correct answer. Question number two, two times the sum of 58 and 12. Again, we've got that word times, which tells us that we are doing two times something. Sum lets us know that we are going to be doing addition. And then we've got that 58 and 12. And once again, like our previous question, we are going to put grouping symbols around there to indicate that we're doing the addition first. So we're doubling, or two times, the sum of 58 and 12. There it is, a little bit neater. I, I put these in here sometimes because my handwriting can be mm, not awesome at times. Write the expression for three less than the product of eight and 12. In the lesson, remember, I talked about this phrase less than. Less than can be a little bit tricky because when you think about it, if it's 3 less than 10, you would start with 10 and then subtract 3. What 3 less than means is you do the rest of this stuff first and then you subtract 3 off the end. So we have that whole thing minus 3. 3 less than whatever this is, the product of 8 and 12. Now let's figure out what is the product of 8 and 12. Product means multiplication. So we do 8 times 12, and then we subtract 3. Because we do multiplication first, we don't need the grouping symbols. But if you prefer to have the grouping symbols in there, you certainly can put them in there. Um, they're just not completely necessary because you do the math the same way either way. There it is written in bright red and a little bit neater than my handwriting. Question four, four, 10 more than the quotient of nine and three. This is similar to the previous question. For me, the way that I would write this is the quotient of 9 and 3, or 9 divided by 3, because quotient means the answer when you divide. So 9 divided by 3, and then I put the 10 more than on the end, just like I would put the 3 less than on the end. You don't need to do that. You also don't need to have parentheses in there. It's just a preference thing. So you could write it like this, 10 plus 9 divided by 3. And you don't need any parentheses. Order of operations says you're going to do that division first anyway. Personally, I like to have it on the end with the more than or less than. 
just because it helps me to not make a mistake when I'm doing less than. But you could do either of these two ways and it is correct. Question five, the product of three and four divided by six. Product means multiplication, divided by, that tells us that we are dividing. So we can do the product of three and four divided by six. Now, you can write this in a couple of different ways. The one I'm going to suggest is probably the best and the clearest is to write it as a fraction. I know we haven't talked about fractions in this course yet, but fractions just mean division. So if you wrote it like this, that's personally my favorite way to write this. You could have also written three times four divided by six. That's absolutely fine. And you could have even added in the grouping symbols, although you don't need to. All right. Anyway, so there we go. I'll have it over here in a nice, neat way without the grouping symbols. Any of these would be correct, and they will all show the product of three and four divided by six. the sum of two nines and seven twos. This one here is tricky and important that we, we look at it. What does two nines mean? Well, it means a nine and a nine, which means 18, right? So nine plus nine equals 18. But that's not exactly what we're looking for with this. We're looking for when you say two nines, you would say that's two times nine. That's two nines. So we're trying to find the sum of one thing, two nines, and another thing, seven twos. The way that I would write this is there's two nines, there's seven twos. And it is the sum of those things. One trick that I like to do when I'm doing this type of question is to read it out loud afterwards. So now what do I have? I have the sum of two nines and seven twos. Okay, cool. That makes sense. There we go. Probably the best way to write this um, is just the way it is there. Let's do another one. Half of the sum of three and eleven half of the sum. We didn't spend a lot of time on this in the lesson, but half means divided by two. So if I'm finding the sum of three and 11, that's three plus 11. Half of that means that I'm going to take that entire amount and divide by two. Again, my personal preference and definitely the way you're going to be writing it when you get into seventh grade and eighth grade math will be like this. Three plus 11, that's the sum of three and 11, divided by two. That would be the way you're going to be writing it in the future. Remember, fractions just mean division. However, you can write it in this way at this point in the course, it's perfectly okay. Either of those answers would be correct. Let's move on to question eight. Write an expression for five times the difference between nine and three. Well, five times, I'm just gonna write that out, five times. The difference between nine and three. Well, difference means subtraction, so nine minus three. Now I have to remember that I am doing five times this, the result. Difference means the answer when you're subtracting. So I have to do subtraction first, which means I will put grouping symbols around it. This is five times the difference between nine and three. There we go. Question number nine, write an expression for four less than the product of two and five. I've got that four less than. Remember where that goes, four less than. That means when you see that less than, it means that it goes on the end. The product 
means multiplication. So this will be the product of 2 and 5. We start with the product of 2 and 5, and then we have 4 less than that amount. So we start with that product of 2 and 5, and then we subtract 4. That's 4 less than the product of 2 and 5. The grouping symbols are not necessary because we do multiplication before subtraction. However, it's for me, it helps with a little bit of clarity to put it in there. You don't need to have them there. Both answers are correct. Question 10. Write an expression for 7 more than the quotient of 12 and 6. Quotient of 12 and 6, 7 more than. In my personal opinion, we're going to put the more than at the end. I just think it helps if we see more than or less than. We, we get in the habit of putting that at the end. I think that's a good habit to get into. So I'm going to add 7 onto the end, and then I'm going to take care of this whole quotient of 12 and 6. That would be 12 divided by 6. There we go. 12 divided by 6 plus 7. If you like to put the grouping symbols in there, that's absolutely fine. Without the grouping symbols is also correct. With more than, you honestly could have added 7 at the beginning. But if you do have 7 at the beginning, you absolutely need the grouping symbols. So if you are going to say 7 more than, and then 12 divided by whoops, 6, you need to have the grouping symbols because without the grouping symbols, you would do, well, I guess you'd do it in the same order, but it's still like, for me, I would put them in there. But I guess you don't really need them. I keep saying you need them, but no, you don't. You could just write 7 plus 12 divided by 6, and you would do the division first. Okay, cool. That is the 10 questions from the worksheet. I hope that that video was helpful for you and explained the way that I think through these problems. I hope doing them together was helpful. Good luck on the quiz and have a wonderful day.